Hi, today I'll be stringing a weed racket using some of the stringing techniques shared on some of my other videos. All right, let's go inside. It's not very often I get to string a weed racket, so I thought it would make an interesting video today. I have here a weed open 135 tour racket. Uh, it has 18 mains and 21 crosses. I am going to be stringing it with a more conventional style of stringing with one piece. It does call for 42 feet. Uh, it says you can get by with 40 feet. And um, they do have another method of stringing called the LP, which is live periphery. But um, I'm not going to be doing that one today. So, um, and I'll be using some of the techniques that I've shared with you in some of my other videos. So, all right, let's take a look. I have a set here of prints. Lightning Pro 17 gauge, which I'll be using this to string the racket. And I went ahead and uh, measured it because I'm I was curious to find out how many feet are on this. So it's almost 41 feet. And the instructions for the racket, uh, this racket said that 40 feet could just barely make it. So I'm kind of curious to see how many, how much extra string we'll have at the end. So one of the videos I posted was measuring the exact amount of string that you need. So that would definitely be helpful in this situation because you wanna make sure that you're not gonna have any extra, uh, like a lot of extra on one side and then not have enough for the very last cross. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, measure it out using the racket. Uh, the center loop is at the top, so I'm just gonna run the string down from uh, the first main to the bottom, first hole on the throat, and just make sure that you have enough string to reach the uh, the tension had the gripper right there. So that's one. It has a uh, 16, so it's eight on each side. So I'm gonna measure eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm also gonna run one cross at the top. So I'll tell you why later, but I just wanna make sure I have enough for that up there. All right, so I have that in my fingertips right there. I'm not gonna let that go. And I'm also holding the, the coil of string, so I'm not gonna let that go right now. So I'm gonna run the, um, the short end that I just measured through one side at the bottom of the throat, come up to the top where the center loop will be, and run it all the way to the uh, other side, the other main. And again, I'm still holding that, that uh, mark where I measured it off. And what I'm going to do is just make sure that I hold on to it until it reaches the throat right here. And then what I'm going to do is just let go of it um, and then measure this part out. So this is approximately the distance from where I held it to where it, where it has to come up to the top. So hopefully that makes sense. But basically you want to do that. Then once you get that measured out, then you can release the rest of the set, but you wanna just make sure you just don't throw it down to the ground. Uh, you wanna try to uncoil it so that it comes off um, without tangling. And on both ends of the, the string, I already cut the, uh, the tip so it's at an angle. All right, so I'm gonna use the Yusuke method to start off the uh, first pull. And this is being strung at 58. Uh, I'm clamping the long, the long side uh, main, and then again you clamp it at the top. Uh, one of my videos I did use the offset tube uh, at the before the starting clamp, but for most synthetic strings, I find you don't really need to use it. So um, I'm not using the offset tube in this situation. All right, so I just released that tension um, again. This tension here is at half the reference tension. So now I'm gonna make my first pull and, and that'll be a true reference tension. Now I'm gonna go ahead and string two mains. Again, you can go up to three and uh, that's the guideline for USRSA certification testing. So you just wanna make sure that you're not gonna ever go more than three. And then, um, That's the two on the left side. I'm gonna come back to the right side, repull that first main so that it's a true reference tension. And then I'm gonna go ahead and proceed until I reached uh, 
the fourth to the last mean, and I'll tell you why, what's gonna happen when we reach that point. On the previous segment, I meant to say I'll come back to you when I reach the fifth mean. So here I am, and I'm gonna go ahead and um, install the uh, sixth mean. Now the instructions call for a five pound drop when you go from five to six, and then another five pounds when you go from six to seven, and then another five when you go from seven to eight. So uh, I'm gonna drop this down to 53 pounds. On this one, this is uh, the sixth main going up. And the reason for that on, their, uh, on the weed rackets is that they want to have a looser tension on the outer mains and crosses to allow more rebound and thus increasing the sweet spot. So um, I'm also doing the 53 on this main going up. This is num main number six. All right, so now we're gonna drop it down to 48. And this is main number seven. Coming down here. Main number seven on this side, coming down. Now on this main, I'm gonna actually clamp the string on the outside of the frame because I'm gonna need this clamp to clamp that first cross uh, that I mentioned earlier. So I have this leather pad with a slit cut into it. And basically it's just gonna provide some padding so that the starting clamp is not rubbing against the frame. All right, so uh, we're gonna drop the next string down to 43. And this will be the last main going up. And this is number eight. All right, so we're gonna um, we're not gonna put in this main uh, main yet. We're gonna have to install this cross on the top. So this is uh, again this is gonna be at forty three pounds because we had to drop it from uh, on the outer main 43, 48, and then fifty three, and then by the time we uh, when we reach inside the middle strings of the string bed, then it'll be at uh, reference tension 58. So I'm gonna go ahead and weave the first cross on the top. And uh, wow, we barely got enough to, I can't even reach the tension in, but no problem because we can use a bridge for that. So I'm up here at the very top cross and this is gonna be pulled at 43 pounds. I have another starting clamp that has a string attached to it. So we're gonna use this as a bridge. But uh, in addition to the 43, I'm gonna use a knot feature. So it's actually bumping it up another four pounds. All right, so yeah, that's why we needed this clamp to be free so we can clamp this top cross here. All right, so as you can see, there's barely enough string right here. There's about seven inches here that will be enough to just go right into a tie off hole and and start and tie this off right here. So I'll go ahead and tie it off on this hole here. So yeah, this, this will actually ensure that I'll probably have enough at the, uh, the very last cross for sure, because you know, with this much left over, I'm pretty sure we're gonna be safe at the end. So. I'm gonna go ahead and tie this knot off. And um, yeah, this is barely enough room to get this knot even tied, but um, again, that's actually a good thing. All right, so I got that. Now we're gonna come back to this uh, uh, seventh main, but I have to bring this up to 48 because I wanna take off this starting clamp, but before I do that, I wanna make sure it's at the tension that we pulled it at originally. So that's at uh, 48. Okay, we're gonna drop it down to 43 again.
All right, so that's the eighth main on the right side. So what I'm gonna do now is that this uh, second cross has to be at 48 because remember we went from 58 to 48 to 43. Uh, is that right? Yeah, 53, 48, 43. So I gotta bring this up to 48 right there. Oh, the reason why I ran an extra cross at the top is to make sure that these two strings on the end will be at the same tension. If I had just uh, run the string up and just tied it here, after you release the knot at the top, there's gonna be a little drawback or a little bit slack that's on the outside of the frame that's gonna cause this string to feel looser than the other side. So uh, by tying it off, by tying off uh, across and making it up here, uh, you know, that'll make sure that in the end, this string and the last string will actually be about the same also because they'll be both tied off. And these two strings are not tied off, so that'll keep that tension uh, consistent also. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the uh, first three crosses. And um, again, this one will be at the 48 pounds. One thing you wanna do too, if possible, you always wanna try and hold on to the end of the string so you don't have to search for the, uh, the tip every time you start the next cross. You just have to make sure you switch it to the other hand and it just takes a little practice if you're not used to it. When you're first beginning, I usually teach beginners to just not worry about it. You just uh, let go of the tip. But um, as you get better, you wanna try and hold on to it. So again, it's a little bit faster. All right, so I'm gonna bring this up to 53. Oh, I'm going down, okay, up to 53, right there. Now, before I put the strings into the holes on the outside, I'm always looking to make sure that it's not gonna cross over a string that's already there. So you, again, you wanna watch for that. You don't wanna ever cross over another string and leave the string um, protruding past the bumper guard. So again, that's one of the guidelines when you're taking the USRSA certification test. Uh, you don't want crossovers at the top of the head. So uh, always make sure that your strings are lying flat on the outside. All right, so as I'm pulling this string, this string right here is actually rubbing against this main that's coming on the outside. So I definitely wanna make sure you're going, uh, I'm pulling it slowly, but I actually ran the string above this string. So I can't really show you that string. I don't know if you can, yeah, I probably can't see it. Uh, but what I wanna make sure that I do is pull, not only pull it slowly, but pull it upwards because I don't wanna cause even more friction by pulling the string down into this string and creating a groove in there or a notch. So I'm just be, very, uh, be mindful of that and just make sure that you're going slow and you're actually trying to pull the string in the opposite direction of where you over um, went over or under the string. In this case, I went over, so. All right, so there's that third cross. We're gonna do that at 53. I'll go ahead and weave one more string and then uh, and then after that I'll weave the rest of the racket until I come to the uh, almost towards the end. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, finish this third cross at 53 pounds. Right there. All right, now we're back to our original reference tension at 58. So I'm gonna go ahead and weave until we get towards the end and uh, I'll, I'll join you there. All right, I just finished the 18th cross. So I'm gonna go ahead and start weaving the 19th. Now on this one, because I'm not gonna have that much string, I'm not gonna be able to do the one ahead uh, technique on the crosses. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this through and then just tension it. Okay, I'm gonna start dropping at five pounds. So now from 58, going down to 53 on the 19th cross. And then cross number 20. Got some uh, strings blocking the hole. So um, again, 
again, I want to make sure I'm not going to cross over on the outside of the frame, making sure that the string stays flat. Um, all right, so. And then this one, I'm going to also drop the tension by five pounds. So now I'll be down to 48 pounds in this one. So finally, the 21st cross. Leave this through here and drop it another five pounds when I tension it. Now I am gonna use a knot feature which does increase it by 10%. So it'll add another four pounds or so. So um, let me get that out there. So 43, knot feature. got about a little over a foot left over so yeah this was uh enough string for sure and uh i'm not sure what it would have been if i actually followed the instruction and measured out uh it called for 11 feet three inches so um, but that's of course without having to allow for that top cross but um yeah but by installing that top cross again you're making sure that these two strings are going to be of similar tension because they're both tied off. And then these two on the outside are not going to be um, different tensions because they're both, um, they were not tied off. All right. So again, I'm going to cut off the, uh, the extra string and I'll show you what I have left over from the 41 feet of string. So I have one that's about, maybe 15 inches and the other one about seven. So yeah, you can string a, a weed racket with uh, one piece with uh, an entire set of 41 feet at least. I probably could have done with 40, especially since that first end was like only seven inches long and you could see how much I had left over at the end on this side. So um, it does definitely help to make sure you measure exactly what you need. Funny thing happened when I completed this racket, I was counting the amount of crosses and earlier in the video, I said there was 21. Well, this one has 19. So I had to go back and check to see where the uh, instructions were for this racket. And the one I was actually reading off of originally was uh, another model. So I, I found it. It's, um, it is a 16 by 19 pattern and the uh, tension range is the same. So the 58 is safe. And the, the slacking off of the uh, three outer mains and crosses still applied. So uh, the string job didn't go to waste. So um, I did want to point out though in that area on the top that I was mentioning that uh, I couldn't really show you on the video. Uh, it's areas like this where you get to the top where you can see the strings that kind of uh, right now it's parallel. You never want the string uh, to cross over and have that uh, kind of appearance. You don't want it to be sticking out of the bumper guard and you don't want it to have it happen either uh, over here also. So you can see that I was looking for an example of one that was incorrectly strung, but I couldn't find one over here. But um, so anyway, you want to pay attention to that. And then um, again, I mentioned how the uh, the two crosses and the two mains on the outside are of equal tension. So that's always a good thing. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Also, I did want to mention, if you're interested in becoming a certified stringer, the USRSA has two levels, a certified stringer and a master racket technician. Uh, you can check it out below. Also, if you want to learn more about racket stringing, a good resource is the International Alliance of Racket Technicians. They have over a hundred videos and articles. As a premium member, you have access to that. Also, a nice component that they also have is the uh, bumper and grommet database. So if you're looking to either buy or sell, they have it there. So I hope you check it out. All right. Thanks for watching. Happy stringing and let your strings play.